you're an engineer on call for a streaming video service and you're getting called at eight o'clock at night during peak because there's a degradation in video service, in the streaming service, if it's video related, very likely it's one of four signals that are causing you to be paged. And just as there were the four horsemen of the apocalypse, pestilence, war, famine, and death, there's slow play start, low bit rate, high stall rate, and playback failure in the streaming video world. You can be sure that regardless of which one of these elements has caused the alert to be fired, which problem is happening, somewhere something is either slow, failing, or both. And for the engineer on call, their question is, where is the problem happening? Where in the workflow is the root cause? And what is that root cause? Could be an issue with the player, some problem with its buffering algorithm or bitrate selection. It could be an issue with content encoding or packaging. In terms of real-time delivery for VOD, could be just a slow or failing origin or a slow or failing CDN cache or set of caches. Could also be the network, anywhere in between any of these nodes in the network that could be a problem that's creating latency. Last year, the Streaming Video Alliance created this document, Best Practices for End-to-End -end Workflow Monitoring. And the fundamental premise of this document is that cascading effects across the streaming video workflow can be observed and isolated via multi-point asset-correlated monitoring. So this means collecting the data from various points along the way, from the, from the CDN, from the player, from the origin, from the encoder, and then bringing that data together. But that data tends to be siloed. Uh, and even if you can try to connect it in some way, those siloed logs and the metrics that are derived from it are frequently not enough to drive QOE or to address issues in a really efficient way. Several years ago, Peter Bergen, an engineer, was on a panel and he was asked to describe the observability space. And he put this really cool Venn diagram together describing the relationship between the types of telemetry that could be collected. There's logging events which are high granularity. They can be aggregated and turned into metrics, but you really don't get the full picture without tracing, which is request scoped. How long did something take? How long did it take between services? What's that path? from the beginning of a request flow all the way to the end and back. And so tracing is really the third pillar of observability and it is why we're focusing on it within this project. So within the SBA, the fundamental question that we're trying to answer with this project, distributed re request tracing for the streaming video ecosystem, how do we leverage multi-service logs, metrics and traces to enable rapid root cause analysis for streaming video QOE signals? Before we continue, I'll introduce myself. Hello, my name is Josh Evans. I worked at Netflix for about 17 years where I worked in e-commerce, playback services, and operations engineering, which is a technical operations group. So I have experience with streaming and with tech ops and with telemetry. Then I joined DataZoom several years later. DataZoom is the first video data platform. I play the role of CTO there. I'm also a co-chair in the Streaming Video Alliance's Measurement and QOE Working Group. And that's the, uh, the working group that is overseeing this particular project that we're talking about today. By way of agenda, I'm gonna do a quick project overview. We're gonna level set everybody with tracing fundamentals. I'll spend a few minutes just talking about CMCD and how that plays into this project cover a little bit about instrumentation and implementation for the POC, and then do a quick demo. And then after that, we'll do a quick look ahead uh, to, to kind of share what the various efforts, both near-term and long-term, on this effort. So in terms of project overview for phase one, our goals and objectives were to extract trace data from both the player and CDN logging mechanisms, and then define some methods for doing that identify baseline request and response patterns in the end-to-end -end workflow to understand what normal looks like and to look at that across multiple players, multiple CDNs, to make sure we're starting to get a more general sense of what normal is across the various services. Then we want to go in there and inject degradations and failures to see what those look like. What do the trace patterns look like? What do the aggregates look like? And then we want to build a model for correlating high-level QOE signals like slow play start, low video quality, rebuffers, 
to identify the trace patterns that then point to the root cause. So we can essentially create a map between signals, traces, and root cause. Then, of course, we want to develop metrics and visualizations which illustrate the whole process. In terms of architecture, we're keeping it simple. We've got a two-tier CDN configuration, an edge and a middle tier acting to shield S3, which is our origin. We've got an app and a player and a demo app, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then we've got the VDP, which has a player collector pulling in information into the VDP platform, analog collector receiving stream logs, standardizing that data, and then sending it through to an analytics platform. In terms of services and technologies, we have a lot of participation within the SVA. VO player is one of the players that we're going to be integrating into this project. Um, Dash.js as well. We wanted to get some open source uh, implementations here. And the cool thing about both of these players is they both have a CMCD implementation. For CDNs, we're leveraging Fastly, Lumen, and AWS CloudFront, and as I mentioned earlier, S3. And on the video data platform side and analytics, we've got DataZoom on the VDP side, and then we're leveraging Splunk today and Zipkin. In terms of tracing fundamentals, let's just level set here. Let's talk about how tracing unlocks that additional level of observability. One of the fundamental concepts in distributed request tracing is the idea of a span. And a span is essentially the time taken either within a service or even hotspotting around a function or the time taken between services when external requests are made off host to a remote service. Of course, you also want to be capturing the errors along the way. And more generally, you can get a sense of the hierarchy of your services. In terms of troubleshooting support and real-time support, tracing enables distributed transaction monitoring. So you can see how long it takes to get from point A to point B, and if there's degradations, where does that happen? Which then gives you the ability to rapidly troubleshoot root cause. Of course, you can also do offline analysis around dependencies and performance and latency. Now, the cool thing is, is since open telemetry is a standard, if you package the data correctly, you can actually inject it into tools like Zipkin, um, or there's various other ones like Jaeger. Um, and in this case, that data can be plugged in to create these kinds of visualizations. So this is a request flow, similar to what you'd see in a browser. This is a dependency graph with drill downs that allows you to understand architecture. Now, CMCD, which is the next key component that we need to talk about here, is a simple means by which every media player can communicate data with each media object request and have it received and processed consistently by every CDN. And you can see some of the keys on the right-hand side here. The one that I have in red and bold is session ID, which is special, and we're gonna leverage that. Session ID is the identifier for the current playback session that is passed through to the CDN for correlation purposes. And the correlation looks something like this. The player is making regular content requests. It's passing an SID argument and a query string in this case. You can send it via headers as well. Gets conveyed to the CDN where it's logged. And then both the player, which can get that player, which logs its own telemetry with that same session ID can be joined with the cache log lines that also have that session ID argument so that you can collect and combine the information into one place and you can start running interesting queries that join the data together. Now let's just take a minute. I want to talk about our instrumentation and implementation before I jump into our demo. In terms of player instrumentation, as I mentioned, we're using Dash.js and TheoPlayer. We had to use slightly different techniques uh, to do the instrumentation for each one of them. But the goal was to generate and set identifiers in a query string for each uh, content request. And that means setting the SID and the RID, or to be more disciplined about this, uh, CMCD version one does not have an RID argument. So this is a custom key, which we're naming org.svalabs.rid using reverse DNS notation. Now in Theo Player, this is set automatically. They built it into the player itself, which was great. Um, we had to build it in on the collector side for Dash. And then for capture, we needed to capture start time, round trip time, and HTTP response code at a minimum. And uh, in Theo Player, there were some nice interceptor methods that you could implement um, that would then register for callback. Uh, we had to do something similar using the XHR object uh, at the browser level to be able to get access to requests and responses.
And then, of course, that data all needs to be packaged up, standardized, and delivered into the BDP and ultimately to the analytics platform. For CDN logging, uh, we chose to use query strings because query strings are much easier to work with. The CDN data needs to be logged, and query strings are logged by default by most CDN. The CDN may parse out the arguments into JSON or some other format, um, but that could be done by a downstream service as well. If you're going to use headers, there's some extra work to do. CDNs need to parse out the headers and then log them, and we have to determine what the format is for that. Um, and also, headers coming, uh, requests coming from a browser that are sending headers, they need to be given permission to send those headers. And there's an extra round trip involved uh, with the options pre-flight request. Um, and the CDN has to do some configuration to allow those headers to pass through. So we're, we're generally shying away from that, at least for this uh, POC. This is our working list uh, of context that we want to collect from the CDN when we do traces. It's a little bit more than what we described, but understandable. There's session ID and request ID, which we've talked about before. There's the CDN identifier. If you're doing CDN stacking, you need to know whether you're running in Fastly or AWS CloudFront. Um, a node identifier, maybe an encrypted IP or something more general. And then, of course, if the CDN's making requests, um, either generating new request IDs or potentially generating what we're calling sub-request IDs for asynchronous prefetch requests. And then, of course, we need to get the timestamp duration and HTTP response code. Now, the VDP we've talked about before, it has the collector on the player side. It has a log collector that receives log streaming from the CDNs. And then it packages all of that data up in a standardized format and sends it to our analytics platform. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a brief demo. This is our demo application. We're going to pick dash JS for our player. We're going to choose Fastly for our CDN. For the CMCD carrier, we're going to use query arguments instead of using headers. I'm going to set auto play so that when I create, it automatically starts playing. And I'm going to mute uh, because you don't need to hear the video play while we work through this. Now, you'll notice that down below, I'm running this in fast 3G mode just to slow things down a little bit and make them a little bit more interesting. On the right-hand side, you'll see the CMCD arguments as they go by for each request. And this is tiers of steel, so you see the identifier here for the file. You'll also see the session ID down below here. And you can see org.svalabs.rid here, which is our request ID. Now, down below, you can also see the session ID here for the entire session, each individual request, the URL, response times, status, etc. So that's all the information that we need on the player side. Now, this has been playing for a couple of minutes, so let's go ahead and look at the output. And we can see what the bootstrap for the session looks like. Now, let me describe this chart just briefly. On the top, we have player events. These are strictly events, so there's no duration associated with them except for buffering, where we did explicitly instrument a duration. So length matters here, but does not matter for these events. For content requests, these are the requests made by the player to the CDN, and these do have duration information, and the lengths do represent duration. And down below, we have the CDN log lines here. We have not yet instrumented these for duration, but we will. And But you can see the correlation between the request made by the player and the log lines in the CDN. In this case, you can see here, this is the manifest request and some segment initialization requests here. And these are segment requests here. This is for content. You know what these are because the nice thing is that CMCD will tell you, go drill down in here, the object type. In this case, it is M for manifest. So that's really quite handy. And you can also see the request IDs lining up here. You'll see the last three characters here are 03B. This is also 03B. You can see a content request here ending 704. You can see 704 here. And this request here is 33A and 33A here. Now, in this case, there is not a cache miss. These are returned, because otherwise we'd see multiple log lines here for both the edge cache and also for the middle tier cache. So really quite interesting. And then you can see this nice long gap in between um, where this is where playback is happening until some additional chunks need to be pulled in to fill the buffer. 
Now, I did a pre-recorded session as well, so we'll go ahead and take a look in here. And in this case, I used slow 3G um, just to make things a little bit more interesting so that we could see things like stall requests happening. So you see here the same bootstrap over here, fetching the manifest, segment initialization, audio and video tracks being pulled down. And you can also see here um, there was a stall, a very short stall though, and you can even see the flow because you can see that content was being fetched. These were content requests that were being fetched. Um, and in parallel, the buffer had run out for a short time, but then the content came in quickly enough to continue with playback. So we're starting to see the patterns and the flows, and this gives us more of a visual sense of how this all works. So this is what we have today. We have a lot more work to do. And one of the last things I'll leave you with on the visualization front is that we figured out how to take data that we pulled from CDNs and players, and we know that we can now cobble it together into a format that can be ingested by Zipkin. So we are one of our next steps as well is to start figuring out, is, is to get this stuff actually plugged in and start creating some of these kinds of visualizations. So really exciting stuff. Now looking ahead uh, for phase one, let's talk about next steps. And we're still gonna be anchored in VOD. We will eventually get to more complex types of things. We'll get to live streaming, encrypted content with DRM requests uh, and injecting things with ads and maybe even look at server-side ad injection. But for now, we're gonna stick with VOD. And for our next steps here, we need to continue baselining those simple su success scenarios. We need to create data at scale. So we wanna be able to get some concurrent sessions going. And we're gonna look at met different methods for getting sort of a headless player farm going. We need to go and start with our failure simulation. We have a set of failures that we've identified, uh, some symptoms there and, we're, and trigger method triggers uh, for those types of uh, failures. So we're starting to work through that. We want to expand the number of CDNs where we can consume the data and turn it into trace data. We'll be working with our other SDA members to do that. And we want to implement some complex scenarios like requests collapsing when many requests come in in parallel for the same piece of content, prefetch requests, and multi-tier CDN configurations that go beyond edge and middle tier and even CDN stacking where one CDN might be acting as the origin for another one. And then, of course, we want to iterate on the metrics and visualizations and all of that. So this is a very iterative project in general. Now, longer term, we're working with Will Law uh, from the CTA in his, in his role under the CTA, um, organizing an analog to CMCD, which is CMSD, or Common Media Server Data. And this is sort of the inverse of CMCD. The purpose of CMSD is to define a standard by which every media server can communicate data with each media object re response and have it received and processed consistently by every player and intermediate proxy server for the purpose of ultimately improving the quality of experience enjoyed by end users. But here's the simple way to look at it and what we're working on together. So the SBA is now working with Will Law under the CTA in a joint project and we're looking at extending CMCD. Right now CMCD is just between the player and the CDN edge and making sure that that context, the session ID and request IDs pass all the way through to the origin and back. And CMSD is the path, is the response path from origin through proxies back to the player. And this would give us that sort of complete picture of information passing through. Now there's a bunch of interesting conversations going on. Should we be using just header responses and pass that all the way through the player? Should we be relying on CDN logging at each point along the way and then use log collection to pull all of that together? Are we, we're looking at request traces between services versus what we want to do intra-cache and think about hotspot functions and things like how long did it take to pull stuff off of disk. And we're talking about tra what trace spans we want to define and what are the various methods for how we collect the data? What format do we collect them? How does it get propagated? If you're interested in this and learning more, check out the GitHub repo for CMSD. The URL is down below. And there is CTA 5004 if you're interested in CMCD. Uh, that's a great document to become familiar with. And likewise, if you're interested in learning more about distributed request tracing and the SVA effort, especially if you're an SVA member, please join us uh, to learn more about this. Mm -hmm.